Uh, hi, Shika. Hello, Shika. Hi. Namaskar. Namaskar. How are you doing, Shika? Good, sir. How are you? Yeah, cool, cool. Devi, any ma'am will be joining? Uh, she's in some meeting right now. If she, uh, okay, if she finishes her meeting, so okay. I'll ask. So we will wait for five minutes. Let other no, parts... Okay, okay. No problem. No problem. So uh, you are uh, recording this session in Zoom or in uh, YouTube? So on Zoom. Zoom, okay. Can you please send me this video whenever it's possible? Sure, sir. Sure. I will share it. You can just email me the video link or something. Sure, sir. It's not going, it is not in uh, Zoom, right? It is not going to Zoom, right? Uh, no, sorry. Uh, YouTube live. It's not YouTube live, right? No, sir. This will not okay. go to the YouTube. I will share it to you, sir. Yeah, thank you. I'll just test my slides, just one sec. Uh, are you able to see the slides, um, uh, Shika?
A very good evening to one and all. My name is Shikha Pandey and I am the host for today's session. I am delighted to welcome you all to a new episode of STEM Masterclass on the topic of design thinking in education, fostering creativity, problem solving and innovation skills. Before we begin with the session, I would like to deliver a few important instructions to all. First, we recommend that you attend the session through a laptop rather than a mobile or tablet for better experience. Keep a notepad handy so that you can write down all important points. Feel free to post questions on the chat box, which will be addressed during the last few minutes of the session. To gain maximum from the session, give your undivided attention and avoid all external distractions. Now, before we start with the session, I have a question for all the participants and I would request please answer in the chat box. The question is, integrating design thinking in education equips students with transferable skills applicable in various fields and industries. Please type A if you are agree and type D if you are disagree. I repeat the question. Integrating design thinking in education equips students with transferable skills applicable in various fields and industries. Now, let's begin with a detailed session on the topic of design thinking in education, fostering creativity, problem solving, and innovation skills. And today, as our esteemed resource person, we have with us Dr. Prashant R. Nair. Thank you. Dr. Prashant R. Nair, Namaskar, sir, is a DST Amrita Technology Enabling Center fellow, Vice Chairman IQAC at Amrita Vishwa with the Pete and Pombidu. Dr. Prashant Nair is working as Vice Chairman IQAC of Amrita Vishwa with the and Pombidu. He has over 22 years of teaching, research, mentoring, training, consultancy, and academic administration experience. We welcome you, sir. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Shika. So I can start now? Yes, sir. you can begin with your session. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Shika, for that uh, very kind introduction. Uh, a very warm greeting to this uh, this uh, work, uh, this session on design thinking uh, as part of the STEM at uh, NEP 2020 series jointly organized by uh, uh, Edu Devs uh, and uh, who, who's the partner for Amrita Vishwavidya Pidam, which is ranked as the number one private university in India. Uh, so I, I'm sure you saw the beautiful uh, campuses in the video. So what I will be doing today is to demystify what this design thinking is. And uh, at the end of this session, uh, you know, uh, speak uh, about some of the contexts that we are, we have already been adopting uh, design thinking in the education front. And I'm sure we have a very good set of participants from schools, from colleges, uh, so, uh, school children, college students, uh, faculty members from schools, colleges, who can kind of add more context. So my uh, objective here is to just give you a broad idea of what this design thinking is, rather demystify this uh, concept, and then we can talk about how this can make a big dent in the education space, uh, not only school education, uh, higher education. Now, you know, this invisible boundary, these boundaries that were hitherto there between the school education, vocational education, skill education, um, um, uh, higher education, professional education, all these invisible boundaries are disappearing. Now it's, everything is becoming integrated. We are seeing, you know, as after being a, uh, an institution, uh, in an institution for 20 three years as a professor of computer science, uh, seeing so many students, uh, you know, a lot of input, you know, uh, depends upon the kind of uh, instruction, exposure, 
uh, ambience that a, a college student gets in the school to a, to a large extent that makes a big difference you know see if i if i look over the last 20 23 years i see the the star students most of them the star students you know they have had a very good grounding um, in the uh, school education in terms of their um, the ambience the facilities the faculty the exposure that they have got in the school which they kind of top up when they come to the institution in the college or the uh, university or a professional education so you know it's kind of a topping up to be very honest with you because otherwise you know we have to do a significant amount of rework to try and up, uplift the students which we are doing but we see that the stars are those students who kind of do ex exceedingly well in the schools and these uh, schools are founts for uh, you know uh, creativity innovation uh, uh, helping the students get their best uh, you know outcomes so as to speak so let me just share my slides uh, uh, is my slide visible shika shika is my slide visible yes, sir. yes it is visible okay so uh, I'll try to kind of talk to you what this de design thinking is, demystify this, and then we can see how, uh, uh, what are the contexts that we can put it in the education format or the education space. Now, uh, before I uh, go into the, the concept of, uh, of um, design thinking, you know, I want to kind of uh, stress upon the need today for relentless innovation today we need innovation whether we are an individual whether we are a, a company whether we are a startup whether we are an organization whether we are a country it doesn't matter innovation has become a given innovation has become a, a priority and we are seeing that you know the ones who are innovating are the ones who are um, leading any field so as to speak, whether it is a nation, you know, uh, uh, today uh, America is the only, is supposed to be the only superpower, although China is trying to show uh, itself as a superpower or Russia also, uh, you know, uh, doing some posturing, but we need to understand that, you know, it was not happening in a day. The technological innovations that have propelled America have brought them to their to this exalted position that they are today. India is very uh, much catching up. Today I, morning I was glued onto the television. You know I was so proud to see that you know how they are respecting Indian innovation, how Indians are making a mark all over the world. So whether you are a country, whether you are a company, whether you are an individual innovation has become the priority. The ones who innovate move forward. The ones who don't innovate fall by the wayside in, in, in terms of the competition. And education is also no less behind. Being in professional institutions, the ones who are innovative, the universities, the colleges that innovate, that not only innovate their curriculum, they innovate their pedagogy, innovate their methodology of teaching, innovate their evaluation patterns, examination systems. They are the ones who produce the best output. And these are the students who are going to change the world, right? So innovation has become the topmost priority, whatever you are, whether you are, a, whether you are an institution, whether you are a company, whether you are a country, or whether you are an individual. Now, simply speaking, uh, in, uh, innovation's definition is very simple. You are making something new, something novel, something productive, which is of benefit to somebody. And it is solving a problem. The, the origin, the word origin of innovation comes from innovare, which means to make something new. And when we are making something new, we are uh, making something in terms of new products, new services, and of course, new processes. That is also very important. Processes. We have, we make, we innovate to make better processes. And as a result of these processes, we get better products and services. And uh, as mentioned, you know, today uh, the country is moving, marching forward, marching forward in the innovation journey. In the last uh, five, five years, 
uh, the, there is something called the WIPO Innovation Index, which measures the innovation capability or maturity of a country. Last five years, we are seeing India climbing, leapfrogging in these rankings. I think we were 80 or something, seven, eight years back. Now we have jumped for, to 57 in 2017 and we have moved to 40 in 2022. And in 2023, I'm very sure we will go further ahead. The, 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 the plan is that India should be in the top 25 within the next couple of years. That is the plan of the policymakers and so on. So innovation has become a compelling need. Everybody needs to innovate. Today, we are living in a world of uh, so much uncertainty. The world is... Uh, the, the, the situation of the world is uh, mentioned as something called VUCA. VUCA is a term we used in, in management parlance. Some of you might have heard about VUCA. VUCA stands for volatility, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity. I will repeat. Volatile. world uh, Things are highly volatile. Things are highly uncertain. Things are always complicated. They become more and more complex and many things are ambiguous. This is the world that we live in. You know, so many things. Nobody can predict what is happening tomorrow. Last one and a half years, we, were, we, are, we are suffering. The whole world is suffering because of a, a war. Today also the Honorable Prime Minister uh, said that this is not the era for war. Because of the war, so many things are being disrupted. So many issues are happening. We just came out of a pandemic, or rather more or less we have come out of a pandem pandemic that completely uh, put a, kept us, us in our homes for the, the larger part of a year and a half. And nobody knows what is going to happen tomorrow. The world is volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. We, we need to be always prepared. Plus, we are living in a world where there are so many forces at play. Forces at play means there is tremendous competition. There is globalization, pricing pressures, competitive uh, thing. Customer is the king. You know, 30, 40 years back, uh, you know, there were only two cars in India. You have to wait three to five years to buy an ambassador car. That was the only car that was automobile that was available in India. There was a premier Padmini Fiat. I know that, you know, you are, there was a waiting time for this ambassador car. You have to wait to, to get the delivery, sometimes more than a year. Now you fast forward to 2023. It is now, it is that, so that time when the ambassador car ruled the roost, it was a seller's market. Whatever was being made, the seller had the control, the seller could dictate, and it was a seller's market. Now, from uh, say 1970s, you fast forward 50 years to 2023. It has become a buyer's market. The customer is the king. Today, you can buy a car in any segment. You want a small car? Yes, available. Four or five cars are there. You want a sedan? There are 100 models. You want a see, SUV? It is available. You want a mini SUV? That is available. You want a luxury car? Dime a dozen. All the automobile companies are selling the best cars in India. It is now a buyer's market. The buyer, the customer can decide. And uh, plus, we are living in a world where the, the internet, uh, the digitalization has influenced every aspect of human life. Human life has been completely aspected because of digitalization. Digitalization has completely changed uh, uh, the way we live, internet, uh, social media, and so on. You know, you can imagine. Now, uh, in such a situation, it is really great to know that India is leaping forward, moving forward, and uh, in the innovation space. And uh, I, why I want to talk about innovation is because design thinking and innovation are like twins. Design thinking is one of the major tools that drive innovation. That is why I want to spend some time on why innovation and so on. India has today emerged as a startup nation. We are the third largest startup ecosystem in the world. 100 plus um, unicorns and almost 100,000 startups. High technology people who are, who are 
who are changing the face of the country. And when I say unicorn, it is a company with a $1 billion valuation. A company with a $1 billion valuation is considered as a unicorn. So we have 100 plus unicorns. Even America does not have that many unicorns. And of course, Microsoft, Google are not unicorns. I mean, they are not startups. They've become big companies. So you can, you leave those things, you know, they don't have this many unicorns, this many startups like India. So India has arrived. And why I want to say stress upon the importance of design thinking and uh, design thinking and uh, innovation is, you please understand for every unicorn, for every unicorn, for every Ola and Uber in the, in the space of ride sharing, for every Flipkart or Snapdeal in the uh, online retail, for every Zomato, for every Swiggy in the online food ordering, for every Yatra, for every makemytrip.com travel, uh, e-travel, there are 100 plus which have failed. 100 plus fail. The, the, the statistic, now this is not given by me, this is given by Harvard Business School, that for every successful startups, there are 100 startups that have failed. That is, the, the, so it is not so easy. See, 40 years back, Ambassador had no competition. Now it's not the case. There is tremendous competition in every space. As I told you, competition, globalization, pricing pressures, internet, uh, social media, all these have completely changed the face of the planet. And in this situation, we have to also understand that in such a situation, for every successful startup, 100 startups might have failed. Mind you, they may, there may have been startups who had better ideas than Ola and, uh, Ola and uh, uh, Uber. Might be there, but they have failed, right? For every Swiggy, you know, we, we, we order non-stop on Swiggy. Probably there were 100 plus food ordering apps that were better, but they failed. Why was that happening, right? So design thinking is one tool that helps you to buck this trend, to reverse the trend, to ensure success in whatever we do. That is the uh, that is the intrinsic link between design thinking and innovation. Design thinking helps you to innovate better. Design thinking is a methodology. It it helps you to innovate better. That is the the link with what um, uh, about this design thinking. Now uh, going into design thinking. What is design thinking? See. Let me tell you, this is, uh, this is not rocket science. This is things that we have been doing consciously or unconsciously. You know, uh, when, a, when a guest comes your, to your home, maybe one of your relatives, your mother prepares food accordingly to the guests. Because the mother knows the tastes and the preferences of the guests. These guests have been coming many times home. And over a period of time, your mother has understood their preferences and tastes. And accordingly, mother prepares the food tailored to those people. This is an example of design thinking. And it was consciously done by your mother. Right? So it, this is not rocket science. This is a new systematic methodology that helps us. How do we solve a problem? We use our exp experience, past experience we use. We have already applied for a passport. Now, we, once you have done that, oh, you know what the process is. Here and there, chota mota, there might have been some changes, but you are still, you know the system. You know how to do a, a review, an audit. You have got the expertise to do it. You have been trained for it. Based on the training, the expertise, you do it. And sometimes, you take judgments, you take a call, you, 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 uh, you go with your gut, you go with your intuition and take decisions. And many a time, there are other situations, other situations where uh, such issues have happened and these based on you, you have solved these problems for those situations and you replicate the same again. There's also a way to solve a problem. So what I'm trying to tell you is that Design thinking is a systematic approach that captures all these in a structured, rational fashion. 
It captures all these things in an efficient fashion. It is not new, you know. It's not a, uh, you know, a totally new thing. It's been there. But when you do it in a very structured fashion, in a very uh, rational, systematic fashion, fa fashion method, you have, you, uh, you uh, go into design thinking. Now, let us see what design thinking is. Design thinking is a human-centric approach, focusing on the needs of the customer. Like I told you, your mother has been serving the guests for so many years. She knows the preferences of the guests. Based on that, your grandmother has come. She knows exactly what is needed from the grandmother. And accordingly, she makes. And grandmother comes, grandfather is also there. Grandfather has some other tastes. But she knows how to balance the concern. So design thinking is a, is a it's not only a process. It's a human-centric approach, focusing on the needs of the customer, understanding the problem from a very holistic point of view, and offering solutions for that. Now, uh, I this is actually a computer, uh, this thing, you know, see the forest for the trees. I will repeat, see the forest for the trees. Whenever you are looking at a tree, look at the forest also. So this gives means you, this means that whenever you are doing something, understand the bigger picture that is there. The bigger picture that is there. Always don't think, uh, look at things in isolation. Now, you do some change here. Does that change other things? How is the relationship between that and other things? All those things, the side effects, the after effects, the pre effects, everything you focus in a very human centric, human centered fashion, people centric fashion, understanding what that is the idea behind design thinking. Now, let us see how you do this design thinking. Design thinking is a non-linear iterative process. Iterative means repetitive process that teams use to understand users, challenge assumptions, redefine problems, and create solutions to solve these problems. And some of the aspects of design thinking is, see, we have to understand the key words here. It is non-linear. It is not a straight line. Linear means you move from one point to another. You move from A to B and B to C. But non-linear means sometimes you go to from A to B and B to C. From C, you come back to A. Sometimes you go back to B and go to C. Then again, you come back to B. Sometimes you have to go back to A. It's a non-linear process. It's an iterative or a repetitive process. Every single time you are understanding the needs of the end user, the customer. And based on that, you, you, you question the assumptions. Don't go with what, you, what is known. You question the method. The, 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 the design thinking paradigm itself helps you to question the assumptions. Why is it like that? Why? Go on asking why. Redefine the problem. Innovate relentlessly. And some of the tools that we use in design thinking is what is known as immersion or shadowing. You immerse yourself, you move into the, you, you empathize, you become that person. That is the first step. I'll come to that. Collaboration, networking, talking to mass many people, brainstorming, and validation. So these are some of the tools that we use for design thinking. Now, going into the phases of design thinking, this is a very straightforward thing. As I told you, design thinking is a systematic, rational, structured, non-linear process of solving problems through a human-centric approach. You focus on the, uh, the, the, the stakeholders, the, you, the end users, the customers, and you go through a very simple process. This process has already always been there, and we have probably been doing it in bits and pieces, but now in design thinking, we go through a very structured, logical process, a five-step process. Empathize, define, ideate, prototype, and test. Now, please understand, although these are five steps, these steps are iterative. You go continuously again and again. 
you empathize, you uh, empathize with the end user, you define the problem, you ideate, you prototype, make a small model or a scaled down version of the actual thing, then you test. Having said that, you will see that these lines are moving haywire. There is no linear thing. This is a step. You empathize, define, ideate, prototype and test. But many a time you have to go back to the drawing board. You will see the arrows are moving, right? From testing, you may have to go back to the problem definition. From prototyping, you have to go back to the idea. From ideation, you may have to go back to the problem definition. There are 100 lines back going up and down. That feedback, that is the non-linear aspect. Iterative, non-linear, human-centric approach. I'll give you an example. What is empathize? Immersion. You become, you put yourself in the, in the shoes of a user. If you are designing a hospital, you are designing a hospital ward where patients are coming in, where doctors are seen, where people are taking tests. Become, think like you, what, what if you are the patient? Consider yourself as the patient. Immerse yourself as a patient. Shadow a patient. Move with the patient. Shadow the patient and find out his or her needs, difficulties. I'll give you a simple example. You go to a hospital. Many a time I have seen hospitals are chaotic uh, places. I'm not talking of best super speciality hospital. You go to a hospital, a very chaotic environment. Many a time. You go there, he'll say, okay, I want to see the neurology doctor. Oh, you're, please note, you're already sick. I want to see the neurology doctor. Oh, neurology doctor, third floor. Okay, you're already sick. Somebody is there with you, but then you have to go from ground floor, take the OP ticket, the outpatient ticket, and go to the third floor. Once you go to the third floor, uh, they'll ask you to wait. Then when you are waiting, uh, you after some half an hour, 45 minutes, uh, you will... Uh, They'll say, the doctor will say, okay, I, you, I need you to take a blood test, a urine test and x-ray. Uh, where is the blood test? Oh, blood test, you have to go to the fifth floor. Where is the urine test? Uh, you have to go to the third floor. Where you have to go for the x-ray, that is the first floor. See, please note, you are a patient. Already you are not well. That is why you are going to the doctor. And they, you are running from pillar to post. Why? Because the hospital has got very little, less space. Somehow they are managing to conduct uh, this thing. They are trying to keep things near, but sometimes it is not possible. But if you do a design thinking process, put yourself as a doctor, put yourself as a nurse, put yourself as a patient, put yourself as a bystander, the person who is coming with the patient, you'll get a much better idea. You'll get multiple perspectives. What is a doctor's perspective? What is a nurse's perspective? What is the x-ray technician's perspective? What is the patient's test? And the person who's coming with the patient, many a time the patient, the bystander will only go and pay the bills and do that, you know. They'll say, oh, go, bill is all, and the billing is all ground floor. Every time this person has to run five times. Imagine how difficult it is. That is where, you know, you need design thinking. Empathize, right? Children with special needs, Education, a lot of things, you know, it has to be based on design thinking. Anyway, I'll come to that a little later. But what I'm trying to say, empathize is put yourself in the shoes of the user. Talk with them, survey with them, move with them, immerse with them, shadow with them, understand their journey, and then take a lot of time. Don't do this in a hurry. Take as much time as possible. Maximum time you spend on the empathizing, understanding this. And that is where I said immersion. Immersion means you are, and collaboration. Immersion, collaboration, validation. You are immersing yourself as the, uh, into the, into the, the thing. You're collaborating, talking to everybody. You're immersing in the sense you're shadowing the person. You're walking with the patient. You're walking with the nurse. You're talking to the doctor, talking to the x-ray technician, talking to the bystander. Sometimes being in their shoes, you go uh, as a patient, I want to do this and find out. That is the idea about design 
thinking, empathizing, which is probably the most important step. And let me tell you, this takes the maximum amount of time. Empathizing takes most amount of time. So now, uh, so what is empathy? Being able to listen, engage, observe, uh, survey, understand the problem from the user's perspective, understand the pain points, what are their difficulties, what are their problems, and then get this insight. You can use, there are design thinking gives many uh, uh, tools for this. There is something called a mind map and an empathy map. Let me tell you, I have done this. I have gone through an IIT Delhi course. When you build these mind maps and empathy maps, you get a very clear perspective. These tools are there. The empathy map, the mind map, which you will get an idea about what this person is. What does he feel? What is his perspective? And uh, uh, you get a very holistic view. Now, as I told, when you are designing a hospital, a ward of a hospital, you are taking a mind map of the doctor. You are taking an empathy map or a mind map of the nurse. You are taking an empathy map or a mind map of the patient. You are taking a mind map and an, or empathy map of the bystander, of the x-ray technician, each person you are taking. And this gives you superb very effective insights into defining the problem. This also create, takes a lot of time. If you ask me, empathizing and defining will take 60% of the time. It is not slow. You may think, ah, this I can finish it fast. I understood the problem. No. Design thinking teaches you to explore the problem after a very extensive uh, extensive empathizing and after this empathizing you are trying to define a problem and when you are defining the problem you don't do it fast you have to go through all the empathy maps the mind maps of all the stakeholders and come to the best def definition get several problem statements problem definition brainstorm, analyze the various problem, refine the problem, go back to the stakeholders, say, this is the problem that I have identified. What do you think as a doctor? What do you think as a nurse? What do you think as a x-ray technician? What do you think as a patient? What do you think as a bystander who is coming along with the patient? Go through several rounds of refining and redefining the problem statement and making the final problem statement. It takes a lot of time. Empathizing and defining may take 60% of the time. That is what I would say. At least 50% of the time. Of course, some people who get who are, who are very good, they may do it faster. But in many cases, when you are starting from scratch, starting from the beginning, this may take 40 to 50% of the time. So, you, you have so many problem statements, you re redefine, you de uh, redefine uh, de uh, the problem statement, you refine it, you improve it, you show it to the stakeholders, get their input, get their filter it, and finally take the best problem statement. Next step. Now you have a clear problem statement. You need to find a solution. Design thinking em emphasizes focuses on many coming out with many many solutions see some some mostly we jump the gun oh this is the problem we can solve it i, I am telling you as a computer science engineer oh, there is a problem a smart i will use iot and sensor finished maybe uh, at the end of the day i will use iot and sensor but design thinking tells you to ideate for solving this problem state Ideate in a very big way. Ideate in a very, very big way. When I say ideate, brainstorming, doing maximum brainstorming. Brainstorming with so many ideas, so many, so many ideas, Bring, uh, getting all kind of uh, problem statements, not one, but uh, bringing as many problem statements as possible. Get all the problem statements. 
then there is a design thinking you, you you have done this ideation you have done this you have so many different problem statements you have so many different ideas to solve solutions so many solutions are there then don't jump into any conclusion take these solutions analyze these solutions filter these solutions and then again go back to the stakeholders you have so many solutions so many ways to design a hospital ward again you go back to the doctor again you go back to the nurse go back to the x ray technician go back to the patient go back to the uh, bystander get input again now this will take time no doubt empathizing and designing may take 50% of the time ideation may take 15 to 20% of the 10 to 20% of the time but this process you follow you are rest assured you will have a solution that will be acceptable to the customers to the end users and your chances of failure are much lower than this thing i already told you in the beginning for every zomato there are 100 zomatos that failed this to a large extent at least you have got the feedback from the customers your product is validated uh, through this design thinking process the chances of failure are not in your hands of course there is luck luck is another issue so you have done this now you are you are ideating you are getting so many ideas challenge the ideas challenge ask questions think out of the box look for different type of solutions list all the solutions as much as possible get all the wild ideas list all the wild ideas rank the wild ideas select the best wild ideas that is the third step the fourth step is fairly simple people think this is more very difficult but it's not this is a simpler thing making a model prototype a prototype is a scaled down working model of the actual thing now that if you know the software or hardware or technology or instrumentation or equipment it's not a big deal once you have a clear problem statement a problem definition and you have a very clear solution to solve that problem statement this is nothing not a big deal then you make a prototype a prototype uh, which is a scaled down version which is a uh, uh, you know which is not exactly the final thing but it is something similar to the final thing again take this prototype show it to the customer that is called testing stage take this prototype again show it to the doctor show it to the patient show it to the bystander show it to the uh, x-ray technician show it to the nurse get all the stakeholder inputs you get all these inputs if there is definitely there will be feedback and then again you go back to the drawing board so this in a nutshell is the simple process of design thinking you have to be patient there the, the this process will take time going through the five stages of Uh, 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 probably unconsciously you may be doing these things, but you are not doing in a structured fashion. Empathizing, defining, ideating, prototyping, testing. Any project that you do, you may be doing some to some extent, but not in a structured fashion. Design thinking makes you go in a very structured, logical, rational fashion, and it takes time. It, you have to be patient because every single time you are getting feedback. from the customer from the end user from the stakeholders from when moving from empathizing to defining defining to ideating ideating to prototyping prototyping to testing every single time you are taking continuous feedback from these stakeholders and that as a result will take time you have to be patient so this is the concept i wanted to demystify what this is people are all talking ga 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 what is this it is a simple structure it is not rocket science at all a very simple common sensical structured logical human centric design that is another way people talk about uh, design thinking you are focusing on the end user focusing on the customer focusing on the stakeholder a people centric or a human centric design now people have been structured following this in a very big fashion 
this is one of the success stories uh, which they use design thinking. So uh, GE Healthcare had a lot of problems with uh, uh, pediatric patients, children. And children were crying in, uh, you know, when you are doing imaging, you know, taking, uh, taking MRI scans and stuff like that in cold, dark rooms with flickering fluorescent lights. Children were crying. The parents had to be called. The, the hospital staff were unable to. So GE found out there is a big problem. So GE converted their pediatric uh, technologies using what is known as an adventure, Pirates of the Caribbean Adventure. So when they are getting into the MRI machine, they are able to see a Johnny Depp. They are seeing able to see. I'm just giving you an example. Sceneries of Pirates of the Caribbean. And this was extremely fun for the children. They did not care much about the, the, the flickering lights, the, the radiation and all that stuff. And the result was that it improved the patient satisfaction by 90%. Now here, this is, of course, this may be not a big, great big deal, but still they figured this out through this process of design thinking. Another example, you know, uh, when you try to make things very complex, sometimes they don't work out. Oral-B. Oral-B had an electric toothbrush. They started, uh, so people, many people don't use electric toothbrushes, but some people do. And they, they added a lot, made it like a very, uh, added so many gizmos into it, added too many functionalities into it, like brushing frequency, uh, observing gum sensitivity, music, and all these things. But they found out that these Oral-B electric toothbrushes failed in the, they found out they did a test. Uh, they did design thinking process. They looked at the users. They found out that none of the users wanted any of these functionalities. They didn't want it. You add, I mean, so you can always market an electric brush, toothbrush, which will give you the, the tracking, uh, brushing frequency can be tracked. You can know how many times you brushed, how many, what is your gum sensitivity. You can enjoy music while brushing. All these things, uh, outwardly, they appear to be very nice, but they are not. They are not. They were the, to design thinking process, they found out that these things are not needed by the users. It would have become a big failure if they had put it. The only thing that the patients or the, the, the people who are brushing their teeth wanted was they wanted an easy to charge toothbrush. They wanted to charge it easily. They wanted pins so that they can easily charge it while they are traveling. They can take the toothbrush with them and plug it and use it. This was the simple thing. So these are some of the uh, you know uh, examples of how design thinking have been used. Now coming to the education uh, in terms of higher education, where do you employ design thinking? Already we are seeing that uh, most of the projects that students are doing, many of the top universities have moved on to applying design thinking in their, uh, in their capstone and their project. So most of the projects that students are doing, it doesn't matter what branch, whether they are engineering, humanities or commerce, it doesn't matter. But uh, to a large extent, management also, uh, projects today, most of the good universities, top universities have started design thinking approach. They have started teaching design thinking in the first year so that when they do small, small projects in their courses, their capstone, they have become extremely efficient using the design thinking paradigm. That is one uh, thing. And now uh, people have started, at least the top universities have started employing the design thinking in the pedagogy and the curriculum. Curriculum. See, we have been we have been teaching some curriculum. Uh, you know, yes, we go we go through some feedback for curriculum. We go through those feedback, no doubt. We do. It's not that we don't take feedback from the curriculum, but we we are we are finding out that this curriculum uh, needs uh, overhaul. We may be doing once in a year meetings with some uh, you know experts, getting their inputs and so on, but that is not a great. That's not a going to it's a great method. 
it's rather it would be easier if you have a design thinking approach towards curriculum design, whether it is school curriculum, whether it is a college curriculum, professional curriculum, professional education. This is an excellent way to understand. And when you are doing this design thinking approach in the curriculum itself, automatically it will percolate to the methodology of the teaching. The teaching learning process will also have to modify itself. So when you are doing a design thinking approach to designing your curriculum, you will be looking at new tools, new methods for teaching. Automatically, there will be a force multiplier in the sense that your teaching learning process will get affected. It will get completely affected. And thereby, even your evaluation, your examination, your assessment methods will also get affected. So it will become bring out a change. When you start the design thinking uh, process in the curriculum development, uh, automatically, automatically, this will get percolated into the teaching learning process, the pedagogy, and finally into the assessment and the evaluation. I want to stress upon, you know, uh, one where one place where uh, uh, design thinking has become very effective. I, I'm, I, I do not know uh, many of your schools have STEM labs, right? There, there are some labs called ATLs, Arthur Tinkering Labs. I happen to be on the national committee of this uh, Arthur Tinkering Labs. It is a truly revolutionary idea. In fact, yesterday also Honorable Prime Minister, day before yesterday, Honorable Prime Minister, when he visited the U.S. National Science Foundation, he showed uh, he showcased that as one of the successes. Ten thousand uh, tinkering labs are there all over India, uh, and uh, of course, ideally, we want in every school. But what I'm saying is, these tinkering labs, you are applying design thinking techniques. It's not in part of the curriculum, but you are doing projects in such a way that you are using the design thinking concepts and making your projects. And if you see the national innovation challenges of the uh, Atal Tinkering Labs, that is the marathon and so on, you will find that amazing projects, many patents have come out, some student startups have come out because we are seeing that this, this design thinking is intrinsically linked to innovation. Innovation depends to a large extent. When you follow the uh, design thinking process, at least you are sure that your product or your service or your service could be education or it could be healthcare, it could be a product, it could be a car, it could be a TV, it could be a hospital, it doesn't matter. Your product or your service at least has been validated by all the stakeholders. They are happy. Stakeholders, end users, customers are happy. Now, you go into the market, at least that part is taken care. At least you know that your idea is flying, your idea has worked, your idea has been liked, your idea has been validated by the stakeholders. Now uh, you're, you're going into the market. Now, now the market forces, you need luck. I don't deny that. To, be, to succeed in the startup ecosystem, you need luck. But at least your product or your service has been validated by design thinking. Now you need to collaborate. You need to be lucky. You have to be lucky, right? Sometimes luck. But then people say, you know, fortune fav favors the brave. You be brave. You already have a good product which you have developed through design thinking. You know that it has been liked by the customers. Now you need a, a bit of marketing, a, a bit of luck, a bit of collaboration, a bit of networking to convert your idea into a startup, convert your, uh, convert your idea into a product, your product into a startup. So this is all from my side. I will be happy to take as many questions as possible on various contexts for education in design thinking. Thank you very much. Uh, over to you, uh, um, uh, Shika. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for such a detailed session. Now, I would request all the participants, if they have any questions, please they may ask. Thank you very much for the uh, good feedback. Thank you so much. I would request all the participants to please fill the feedback form, which has already been uploaded in the chat box. I have also put my co coordinates in the uh, in the uh, chat box, my email ID, and you can search for me on LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube. My name uh, is the same, P-R-A-S-H-A-N-T. 
space r uh, space nair prashant r nair you can search and you'll be able to connect with me um, again wish all the students teachers all the best i'll be happy to take any more questions okay so there is one question in the chat box yeah that is but some business don't flourish even with excellent design thinking what can be the reason see um there are two things if you ask me i think there are two things that will be the reason one is uh, perhaps luck they were unlucky uh, you know uh, i want to give you a an example it may not be a very good example but it is some uh, there are some ideas who are very which are very good which are needed but the time has not come now i will give you an uh, example you know there was an uh, low the concept of low cost airlines in india came through a company called air decat in fact there is a tamil movie surare putra that uh, kind of shows the journey of that captain gopinath how he uh, made deccan with so much of uh, difficulties and uh, so much of adversities but idea was very good but idea failed even though the idea went was excellent everybody wanted it common man the basic idea was common man can fly but somehow there was a combination of factors that did not work out in his favor and the idea failed at that point of time but today today you know the who is the lord of the indian skies it is not not indigo indigo is also kind of a low cost the concept is the same the low cost airline there is no business class there is no first class there is no food right you have to pay for everything you know even luggage minimum you can only take the so concept succeeded now may, may not be a very scientific or empirical business example but the idea failed that time it was too ahead of its time that is one reason second reason is sometimes you have a good idea but you need a proper ecosystem to go forward you know that ecosystem many a time was not not at all available in india you know you have a wonderful product the government is breathing down your throat they are giving you a hazar 100 uh, licenses and all this bureaucracy that is one thing again you have an idea but you need somebody an investor to help you that investor is also not available so that ecosystem also matters that ecosystem comes through collaboration networking but that ecosystem is also uh, sometimes um, uh, not there now things have changed there is a very good ecosystem a startup ecosystem is there if you have a wonderful idea there are people to invest but they will take their pound of flesh you know you watch shark tank they will be worse than that what you see on shark tank is slightly dramatized they are not so tough but actually in real life they may be more tougher than what you see on shark tank right so probably luck is one aspect sometimes ideas are ahead of their time sometimes you need the ecosystem also to be very good if you are, that is also probably why some of these great ideas fail i have i was told uh, some consulting i had been doing and i found out uh, some of the uh, excellent ideas failed because the ecosystem was not there Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for answering the question. There is another question in the chat box. Why is design thinking important for education students? See, um, uh, education is today. Uh, we are now into a national education policy, which which is a very aspirational, visionary policy. You please understand that this is not going to be executed in one day. It may take a decade or maybe a, more than a decade for these things to. uh completely get implemented and we are looking at lot of integration of technology lot of integrated across across disciplines the disciplines you know that interdisciplinary focus is coming so we are going on to that uh, field you know and i'll give you an example in america you can take a major in robotics and take a minor in theater or dance so, do you think it is possible in india it's, even today it is not possible a major in robotics or a rob major in space technology and a minor in theater or drama what is the relationship between robotics and drama nothing in india it's simply not possible uh, even today the statutory and re regulatory agencies don't allow those things so but now we are slowly moving on to a state where the nep 2020 great aspirational 
um, uh, concept given by the uh, the modi government has got is getting implemented it will take time it will take a decade and a half maybe to be completely in such a situation we are going to see a lot of integration a lot of cross disciplinary multidisciplinary interdisciplinary um, a lot of technological advancements uh, and in such a situation it is very good that we use this design thinking to rework our curriculum so that we are ready we have to be ready to uh, approach this future change that is going to happen the future scope so you apply design thinking now itself you understand what the stakeholders the students the teachers the parents want so you are ready at least you know their input and then when these uh, when these dramatic revolutionary changes come you are well prepared I think that would be the reason as of now. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Now, I would request all the participants to please fill the feedback form, which has already been uploaded in the chat box. And thank you, sir. Thank you once again for a such a detailed and informative session. Yeah, thank you, Shrika. Thank you very much. Uh, convey my regards to uh, Devi Anima. Thank you. Sure, sure.